Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as pressing that subscribe button, tapping that bell and making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings. So it's been a while since I've been up here. I have been sitting on Rock Patient that is sitting on top of this rock, feeling like I'm getting absolutely nowhere, but knowing I have to be patient all the way through. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. We, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand the mic on over to my husband. So you're gonna be meeting Jeff. Um, he's definitely quite the funny character, that's for sure. But I'm not really able to explain um, what you're about to see um, the best. So he's definitely your guy. So I, again, I'm going to hand the mic on over to him, but then I will be coming back. And I hope all of you absolutely enjoy um, what the major change we have made in the living room, which is flush mount lighting because this room is so dark and also a surround sound system, which he would be able, he's going to be able to get into that part much more better than I can. So I will see all of you in just a bit. Thanks, honey. So let's get into some trouble, guys, shall we? So I knew I wanted to create a 5.1 surround sound system for this 10 by 15 room. And I'm going to start with your basic left, center, and right channels. Um, and then your left and right surround. And in this case, I'm actually going to use two subwoofers um, in opposite sides of the, of the room, uh, in the rear of the room, two 10 inch free air subwoofers because I couldn't have any subwoofers or any speakers on the floor. So they'd have to be recessed into the ceiling. So we'll go through, we'll show you how it was designed, how it was set up and then how the electricians did all the magical wiring for me. We'll start off here. Those blue markings you see on the wall are kind of a, a measured distance that I want the electrician to put the speakers at. Um, and here on the mantle, I have some of the necessary wires that were needed. Um, we'll start off with the 12 gauge speaker wire. This is the wire that'll be used uh, for all the speakers. I decided to go with 12. It carries more current and it's UL listed, so it helps with the noise. Um, the 16 gauge wire here that you see from Garrett is going to be used to send all my signal for my 12 volt turn ons that will actually turn on all the uh, components because I make uh, a lot of my cables myself. The socket that you see there will be getting upgraded with new wiring. I'll be installing that myself. And then here's the projection screen. Uh, this is actually from Elite Screens. It's a tab tension B uh, screen. Uh, I think the grain level is a positive one. Um, that positive one means that it's able to reflect a lot of the light in an ambient room. So that's why I, um, I went with that type of uh, screen. But more on that um, about, about the projector screen. Um, there you can see the prepping. You can also see that I didn't take down Bev's decorations. Shh, don't tell her. Um, also, the projector is going to go in that space or was planned to go in that space. And then a subwoofer uh, was planned to go there in the corner with my uh, back surround channel. Now here we have the Lithonia lighting. Um, the color temperature is 3000 K. Um, that is the warm bright light uh, we wanted warm versus the white um, what you see on the right is the actual light itself it is model WF6 we'll link that in the Amazon store as well um, very nice lighting units um, able to go under joists because they have such a low profile 
Here you can see how the work got started. Um, the electricians got those up really fast. Um, our main electrician, uh, the foreman, he's actually really good at doing these. He's done so many. Uh, there you can see the power and the pre-cut holes already. Um, the subwoofer uh, is there. It'll be cut between uh, two or yeah, two joists. Um, and this is the material that he actually had to cut through. So um, this material, guys, is three quarter inch thick. When I showed it to my dad, who's a general contractor, he said, son, I think that's actually more than three quarter inch. But you can see the concrete bead that's on top of that material. Um, the concrete bottom was the, is the plaster and then that concrete bead at the top. You also have to overcome that as well if you're going to install anything in the ceiling. So that's what I had to deal with. Now, in order to cut through that so that I could cut my speaker holes, I suggest that you use this tile bit here. We'll link this in the, in the Amazon store as well. If you're going to cut through an old ceiling like this, and that, that's actually a plaster ceiling, got to use that as your cutting tool. Um, there, you know, we have a common mistake the electricians made. I told the guys, don't worry about it. We'll just cover it up when we do the patching. Um, but it happens when you're doing construction work and you're trying to measure everything out. But here you can see that the speaker wiring is already uh, routed. Um, there's the multimedia cable where the screen is going to go. Um, but let's concentrate on this for a second because there's a little story. So we found out that we couldn't put the screen in because it was the joists actually go perpendicular to the um, uh, fireplace. So because those boards go in the direction that you see those red lines, we couldn't cut through the joist. If we did cut through the joist, we'd have the top floor falling into the living room. <laughs> so we, uh, we definitely can't have that. So what we decided to do was change it on the fly. I changed the design really quickly and had the electricians um, put a mounted a mount for a large uh, flat screen uh, to go on the mantle. Um, sorry, Bev. Sorry, honey. I didn't mean it. Um, but um, now we're going to show you that the lighting is on. Um, we got the power on very quickly, was able to wire in. Our electrician is, he's such a good guy. I mean, he is fantastic. Um, but here you can see the cutouts. He also was able to get the mount up very quickly. Um, having the right stone uh, bits definitely help so that you can anchor uh, whatever you're gonna put, um, especially with your project um, into stone. But he was able to level it out um, got that done here you can also see that the rough patching is done uh, from the cut ends we're going those have been started um, he was also able to find the uh, original dimmer switch and tap into that um, and get that all wired in no problems at all um, and here you can also see that the multimedia wiring is ran it's also in and inside that three gang now here we have the speakers that I'm gonna use. These are uh, OSD audio uh, 10 inch woofers. Those are the construction brackets that I'm gonna use. Um, but more on that, we'll get back to those in a minute. But here's what I wanna show you guys. This is why you deal with professionals, right? When you deal with professionals, they mark everything. Each one of those numbers you see is a, a number to the channels on the speaker wires. Um, fantastic. Uh, idea as well as a, a schematic that he gave me for where the speakers are going to, where they're placed uh, that socket that you see there I'm showing that because that's going to also be upgraded um, I'll just be, I'll be changing that out uh, myself here's the 10 inch uh, speaker template for the subwoofer so you can cut a perfect circle um, definitely need that so that you're not recutting and cutting uneven um, speaker openings and this is the speaker bracket for the 10 inch subwoofer that subwoofer actually is uh, going to go in between two joists um, but keep in mind those joists have to be 16 inches when you use this bracket our house had 14 inch 
uh, bracket so it couldn't expand like I'm showing there and needs to be done but what happens is that bracket actually goes in compressed but it comes out actually expanded now the problem with this is is that if the bracket is larger than your joists are going to allow you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get that bracket in How am I going to cut this without ruining the bracket? Because once I cut it, of course, I can't. There's no way of returning this thing. So what I had to end up doing was using my Dremel. I cut all of the four sides on the ends um, uh, two inches so that I could get the brackets uh, into the into the space between the joists. I already had the 10 inch hole that I cut successfully with the bit, but now I'm gonna show you climbing up the ladder here, um, what I did with the first one that I have in. So here's the 10 inch bracket. You can see that it's flush up against the, um, the plaster, the plaster material, and then up in the actual crawl space. Oh, you can see the stone wall there. Um, I just noticed that. Um, and then, um, the brackets are ready to be secured um, with whatever um, construction cr uh, screws that you're going to use. And then once I secure that, the woofer actually will use its dog ears, will use the dog ears and secure it down to that space. But you notice how the speaker has just that space uh, available for it, so no unwanted um, resonance from the smaller speakers to the big or big speakers to the smaller speakers. Now here I'm actually um, showing you that the bracket is compressed and what it looks like when you try to uh, put it into the hole. Uh, thank you Sam at OSD Audio for helping me uh, figure out how we were going to plan this out. He was awesome. Um, so when you put the uh, bracket in, it'll expand like I'm showing you there. And the only thing you have to do is twist it around. And if it's short enough, it'll fit in between the joists. So here I'm moving on to clamping it. And um, I used a crimping tool that um, we'll also link in the store. But it gives you the perfect crimp for all the wires. And the wiring is um, then uh, able to go into these um, uh, but, uh, posts on all of your speakers. So I'm going to do the first woofer, or I'm sorry, subwoofer two on the left side. And here it is flush mount installed. If you want to know how to install these, um, Outdoor Speaker Depot has um, a great uh, tutorial on how to use these dog ears. Um, and as well as uh, OSD Audio, their team as well. But um, you can see here that it's completely flush mount. It goes up six inches. There's actually nine inches of space from the bottom of the plaster to the top of the floor. But you can see how flush it looks. Um, very clean. Very, very happy with that. So now here are the eight inch um, speakers. Um, I guess I didn't tell you how large those are. Those are actually eight inch um, drivers. And I have it flushed them out in. You can see all the scarring from the jigsaw on the ceiling. <laughs> Um, there's some of my rough end patches and where it's uh, located in, in relation to the the flush mount lights that was all planned um, it turned out perfectly but you can see here there is the the rear right channel and subwoofer one um, there is my front right center and the front left channel so these turned out great. I'll give you a pan back so you can see. Um, as you can see, the decor is still there and I got in big trouble for that, guys, because there's dust everywhere on Bev's stuff. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> word to the wise, you guys move your wives things first before you start the construction work. Yeah. So uh, here we're back at the three gang. I'm going to show you how I started terminating the wires coming out of the wall um, and then matching those up to the plates. Um, this is how I um, planned this out by putting the terminating them on the ends 
um, also using the crimp connections. That way I didn't have any free wires hanging over. It's nice and clean, stays tidy, and I don't need to worry about any shorts um, with, the, with the speaker wiring at all. Um, the next thing I do is a little trick that I learned very early in, in my electric, electronic days is using a nine volt speaker, uh, using some low voltage to test the channels to see where they are to make sure that the wiring correlates with the location of the channels. So what you do is take your positive and negative, you line it up on your positive and negative on your nine volt battery and your speaker will, once it makes contact, you only need to leave it up there for a couple of seconds. It will pop and you'll see the cone move. Um, here is the, the plate that's on the three gang. We've got it mounted, the optical cables coming out and the side left and side right that you see actually will be relabeled as subwoofer one and two. I'll uh, just need time to go back and relabel that. There I'm just showing the optical cable. It's actually pushed into the wall now, but it comes out about three feet, um, three or four feet. Um, here again, I'm showing the old plate and how it needs to be upgraded, um, the old power plate. And this is what I'll be using. I'll be using a uh, TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi power outlet. Uh, this smart outlet can connect to my wireless securely and it gives me the ability to measure the power coming out and it allows me to control the power of each outlet. So here I'm just showing the rough patching. Now I'm finishing up the job. I've got a lot, of, most of the wiring done uh, for the wall. So I'm just going back and putting some reinforcements in uh, for the wall so that we can prepare later on. And um, the bevel cover the painting and what was done with the trim, but I'm just uh, finishing the hard um, construction work. Um, here I'm going to uh, show that the rough patches are done. Uh, this is a trick I learned on drywall, but I actually I had to actually do it on plaster, but it works on plaster too, putting a one by four in. Um, I'm gonna put a multimedia plate there for access later in case I need to get to the walls um, in the wiring and or upgrade the wiring in the future. Um, just showing here that the rough patches are done. Uh, this is the top uh, plate that, or access, and the access that I'll need to upgrade the HDMI running to the screen. And those are my, the other patches, the final pat, rough end patches um, that were completed. Turned out really good. Uh, here I've got the, um, the power power uh, switch upgraded. Um, have it connected to wireless. Uh, did a test. Both of the plugs are working and are up. Um, these are fantastic. I'll link those in the store too. Very good price on these. Um, and TP Link is um, they make pretty good products. Very dependable. That's why I like working with them. Um, here you can see that I also upgraded the fireplace socket. Um, those guys uh, connected just fine, did a test on those as well. Um, so we're ready to go for the, for the screen that'll be in that place. Um, here I'm going to show, um, like I mentioned guys, I like to make my own cables. So here I'm making a um, three foot uh, cable with banana plugs and heat shrink. Um, show you a little bit how I did it. You strip the wire, you pull it through. There's no soldering with these. So the only thing you have to do is strip your wire back like so. You're gonna cut it shorter than this and I have it here. I'm just doing this for demonstration. But you strip your wire back, fold it down onto the bottom of the banana plug and you screw it on. It gives you a nice, clean, tight look. It actually secures it as you screw it down and um, you have a completed cable. These will be really good because they'll be shielded um, as well with the thick jacket on. Um, I chose WBC cables because they're rated the highest. They're also known to not be astronomically high um, in cost and they carry a great signal. Um, and have a great reputation. So I chose these as my signal wire. 
So here I uh, have the amp in place with the signal processor, the glass shelves that I had made custom for each one of those, I think are 21 by 16. It's a quarter inch sheet of glass. Um, here I'm showing the signal cables, the signal cables coming from the processor, um, my power conditioner made by Paramax. Um, and then once I had all the wiring, hard, the initial wiring in, um, I'm showing the Odyssey uh, microphone. This is actually going to help me set up the speakers. And here's how you plug it in. This is a Marantz uh, AV processor. So it plugs in, your mic plugs in there. And then I'm gonna give you a little demo um, of what to do to set that up. You let it do all the work for you. So here we have the first channel that's going to go off. That's the front left. And in every 10 seconds, you'll hear another channel go off. So then the speakers actually are being uh, optimized right now. It's actually measuring the distance, so doing all the work for you. So there's a, the uh, next channel that was found. You can see on the screen that the computer is actually doing all the work. And then what will happen is you'll go back and you'll look at those measurements and then play your test audio file to see if the distance is going to be good enough. And after it finishes all the small speakers, then it'll go and do a sub check. So first it actually finds all the channels and then it actually does the distancing with the mic and you put the mic in a different position each time to help measure the distance. And once that's done, um, I go back, I check the EQ levels for the room, see how those are set up. Make sure that the going from the left to the right, that the lows are where it should be, that it looks balanced. And here I'm just doing a visual check. The, uh, the sound is actually when you sit down and do the test, this is what, um, where, where, where really makes the difference. And here's the screen um, mounted. So we have that done, um, have that in place just so we can get a visual of where the screen's going to be. And there it is. There's the completed setup. Um, have the Macintosh in place. It's wired in. You can see I have the speakers um, plugged in. The banana plugs. Everything fits in nice and tidy. Um, I've got my um, Apple TV, um, our UHD um, 4K, and a HDMI switcher um, for the 4K um, devices that are going to be going to the the main screen. And there she is, all fired up, ready to go. Um, everything turned out perfect. Electrical works exactly as expected. The power conditioner is actually fixing all the hum. Um, I'll put a, demo, uh, a link in the description for all those components as well. And now for the demo. Left channel. Center channel. Right channel. Right surround channel. Left surround channel. Okay, I'm back. 
I hope all of you had a fun time with Jeff. I know at times he can be quite the character. So I'd like to now go over the painting of this room that I absolutely love. Um, we did go, all of the paint in this living room is from um, Benjamin Moore. They make an absolutely fabulous paint. Hands down, I feel they are just the best out there. Um, we only had to go over the walls one time with this Benjamin Moore. Now, maybe some of you have had to go over it twice, but because our color was so close, maybe, that's the only reason why we had to go over it once. Um, we did go with the eggshell finish. And the ceiling, we actually had that color matched. So I don't have the color, the actual name to the color, but it is like a, like a buttercream yellow up at top. Um, so we went ahead and taped off the speakers. And again, the ceiling is like a buttercream yellow color match, custom match from Benjamin Moore, all of the trim is a white chocolate, and I absolutely love this color. It just, it's amazing, it's so fresh. And the walls are Revere Pewter. I am very pleased with the painting in this room. So we have the tape off, we have all the holes patched, have plates over the access panels. And I can finally exhale a little bit, everyone. This was just, wow, quite a bit. But so open, so fresh, so light. I'm loving all of the light in this room. So we put the screens back up on the speakers. Um, that's a funny story. I went and, and my husband said, Honey, come out here. Come take a look. Come take a look at the speakers. I said, Okay. And I sat there and I looked up and I said, Oh, no. They were all white. I said, We must paint those because they have to match the ceiling. So as you see, they, ha they were painted. <laughs> now to work with the recessed lighting. This company I'm about to share, Bow Arts, amazing. He makes, the company makes, um, oh gosh, so much. Well, here I had him make medallions to go around our recessed lighting and he fits them perfectly. He also, to go over heater, radiator vents, um, the duct system, uh, the vents, wall panels. I have some pretty amazing items I'm gonna be sharing that I had this company make for me. Um, you can call him personally, his name is Stuart. Um, he's fabulous, very helpful, and he has a variety of um, different types of finishes, you know, what you might wanna go with. And I just, I cannot recommend them enough. So I'm going to show you how I placed this medallion. I had six of them made. They put it on some machine. It, it took them about, oh, two weeks, 10 to 14 days to finish things up. And I'm just going to add this um, LED lighting. because I just didn't want to just have lighting up on the ceiling. I, I needed a little bit of, you know, pizzazz or something. So this is just the beginning of many things I'm going to be adding in this home. So it just fits right on. You just keep working around and it, it just fits snugly. 
right inside. So again, Bo Arts, give him a call. He's absolutely fabulous. And look at that, beautiful. Bev can handle that now. And then you just plug it back into the ceiling. Now we have perfection. So this is just one of many things I will be sharing with you all. And please stay tuned because I have a decorating marathon that's about to happen. <laughs>